What is up, YouTube? This is Red Leprechaun Gaming, and welcome back to System Universe Book 2 Torrent by Sunrise CB. We are on Chapter 9, About a Girl. Walter nodded. I promise, as long as this woman does not act against me or my family, I will do nothing that will harm her, and if possible, I will do what I can to help her. Now, what is it that you'd like to discuss about her? The girl's name is Brandy. She was a villager that I saved by chance, with the great system only just being unlocked. She already had a passion for leatherworking. She wanted nothing more than to provide armor for her village to help them hunt in safety, Derek said. He sighed. Unfortunately, because of the spread of the disease caused by the dungeon, her entire village was attacked by a horde of mid-level forest creatures and were pushed out by the higher-level ones that were running from the disease. By the time I arrived, it was far too late for their village and most of the hunters in it. Her father also lost his life, buying enough time for the women and children to escape. I see. There have been reports of monsters attacking villages that were close to the forest. That must have been one of them. That is also the reason the Adventurer's Guild took the report of the possible dungeon seriously and sent out my son's team when news of it arrived. Of course, who would have imagined that it would be a level 100 elite dungeon, Walter added. Derek nodded. That sounds about right, he answered. After saving what was left of that village, I escorted them to Thomas's village. Things happened, but I ended up staying longer than I thought I would. That's when I noticed Brandy's drive and passion for crafting. That's also when I decided to test some things. I helped Thomas level fast and choose a class, but I had Brandy stay at level 1 and focus only on her ge general leatherworking skill. Later, I took her and some others through dungeons around other places, trying to obtain a bunch of achievements before allowing her to level to 10. Surprisingly, it seemed to pay off as she was offered both an epic class and a rare growth type class when she could choose. I won't say what the classes were, but they both seemed quite good. She chose the rare growth type in the end, Derek explained. Walter nodded. That sounds like a successful experiment to me. If only we could find out how much of it was her passion for the craft, and how much was the achievements and the experience. Then again, I don't think many people would be about to focus only on the general leatherworking skill without adequate amount of passion. That's right. I believe it all comes together. Now with Brandy, we were only focused for a couple of months. Think about what would happen if you had someone focus the same, except for years. I believe it would work for multiple class types, too, not just crafting classes. Take your water type classes, for example. If you could find a serious student at around 10 years of age, you could have him train his body and mind and constantly be surrounded by water. Then when he unlocks the great system, you could have him spend a year or two leveling general skills or skills learned through scrolls that have something to do with water magic. I suspect when he finally gets to choose a class, he would select from at least an epic. Who knows, maybe even legendary. Derek Ray laid out the remaining training plan that he had been thinking of since Brandy's success. Walter was quiet for a while, seemingly lost in thought. Finally, he came out of the trance. I think we have a child in the family that could do it, he said. She just turned 12, but it would still be worth trying. Although she enjoys melee more than magic, Walter trailed off. That would work, too. Find the weapon she, that's most suitable for her, and have her train with it constantly by the water or in the rain. Then, when it comes time for her to unlock the great system, allow her to reach level 1. Have someone help her get the achievement for slaying a creature at a certain level above her. Then spend the skill points on one of the weapon mastery skills, along with some type of general magic skill. Oh, and meditation is a must. So I guess she'd have to get the great, the giant slayer achievement for slaying a creature 50 levels above her. Make sure she does it with the weapon of her choice, too, Derek nodded, happy with his explanation. Walter laughed. Looks like I'm going to have to take my great niece as in as a disciple, he chuckled. I wonder how the rest of the family is going to react. She'll be lucky. Hell, if it works, she could turn into the next head of your house, Derek chuckled. Now about finding a place for Brandy, do you think Torrent would be a good option? Walter sighed and then shook his head. The only way would be if you were to stay here with her at all times or allow her to work under me. I don't believe that is what either of you wants. Why's that? The city lord, Malcolm Torrenth. Although I'm much stronger than him, his power comes from his father, who isn't considered too strong, 
but his father has connections. He slithered his way into the king's good graces. You can think of Malcolm as a version of Wallace, but to an extreme. He's never had to work for anything, through, though his level is rather high. It was all done by servants. I don't believe he's ever been in a real fight, Walter explained. He continued, If he finds out the, about Brandy, then the second she is left alone without you or me to guard her, he will have her, and it would not be long when she is forced to sign a slave contract for their family. After that, there'd be nothing you could do to save her. With a slave oath, even if you kill everyone in Torrent, she would die along with them. So I believe you should keep her as far away from this city as possible. Derek frowned. He had expected the city lord to be a bit overbearing, but he never thought it'd be this bad. If the man's as bad as you say, then why does the king allow it? From what I heard about him, he seems pretty reasonable. Jared, Malcolm's father, once saved the king's life. If you ask me, it was all too timely, an assassination attempt happening during a small meeting that just so happened to include Gerald. I was there, and to me it seemed that Gerald moved too fast, but he took an enchanted dagger in the chest and almost died. The assassin died as soon as he failed, so there was no evidence left at the scene, Walter shook his head. The injury to Gerald took a very long time to heal because of the enchantment, so either everything he did was selfless, or he's playing a very long game. As for Malcolm's actions, he knows how far he can go and who he can offend. Though, I know you are a person who should not be offended. No one else does. Well, maybe the Crown suspects so. A slave contract is frowned upon by the King, but Malcolm has used it multiple times, and he only gets a visit from his father and a good yelling at when they find out Walter finished. I see. There, Then, is there a place that you would suggest? Somewhere safe for her, where she could also... Hone her craft and gain reputation, Derek asked. The older man thought a bit before speaking. Savannah, he said, nodding his head. I believe that Savannah would be the safest city in the kingdom. Natalie Savannah is the city lord there, and she is the most neutral of the city lords. What's the city like? Savannah is the third biggest city in Sindria Kingdom, only behind the capital and Rota and is the wealthiest. It is a big merchant city. There's no low-class area in the city, as it was all built by merchants for merchants. The Savannans have taken orphans into the city and raised them as their own for generations, thus keeping the homeless and slum rate down to a minimum. The security is very strict, and there are laws that must be followed. There's no leeway for crimes whatsoever in the city. Because of how successful a merchant city it is, the Savannas have a full control of the city, and not even the king dares to interfere. I have personally met Natalie, and while I can't say we are friends, I can say she is a very upright person. Instead of trying to have a talent such as Brandy for herself, she'd be elated that the girl chose her city to make a living. I imagine she would even post guards with extra security for the girl if she ever found out about her, Walter said. Derek nodded. That does sound good. How is the outside of the city? Are there a lot of dungeons or high-level monsters? I plan to provide the materials for the girl to work with, so that is a must. Right now, I can get plenty of level 100 or so materials for her to use. So is there a good amount in Savannah? There is. There are many dungeons ranging from level 50 to level 250 plus, and the area around the higher level dungeons have high-level monsters. There is a level 200 dungeon desert dungeon that re rewards fantastic weapons. Plus, the enemies inside that dungeon all have some kind of material that blacksmiths and leather workers can use. Not to mention that it is a main city with a teleportation platform. So you can always go to other cities to hunt too, Walter explained. Derek laughed. I let the teleportation platform slip my mind. I guess I'm going to have to check out this savannah once all my business here is finished. Speaking of... Business, Walter said. I was informed by Bronson that you have been doing business with the Crown Restaurant. Would you mind if I asked about that, he said. You gave them a void beast and signed a contract for some kind of beverage? Derek nodded. I happened upon a void beast not long after I saved Brandy and the remaining villagers of her village. I wasn't sure what I was going to do with it other than give the hide to Brandy once she was able to make something out of it. So when Bronson was explaining to me about the crown, I made the decision to do business with them. As for the beverage, I'm sure it'll be a hit once it's ready, especially if the botanist can enhance certain properties of it. That would put you on the fast track to earning a membership, Walter nodded, especially if this beverage does as well as you think. 
other than the business with the crown, is there any other business you plan to do, if you don't mind me asking? Walter was being overly polite to Derek, but Derek didn't mind, nor was he very suspicious. The man had already sworn an oath and made promises, and he didn't seem like the type of person to go back on his word. Even though Derek hadn't dealt with many people in the past, those like Walter were his favorite to deal with. He knew the man had the ambition to clear his family name, but he wasn't the type to step on the innocent to get his way. If he was, he never would have told Derek to go somewhere else with Brandy. So Derek didn't mind let him, letting him know some of his future plans. Honestly, I came here to meet you, to meet the City Lord, and to register with the Adventurers Guild. The crown was just a happy accident. After meeting you, I don't feel the need to meet Malcolm, so I imagine I will head to the Adventurers Guild in the next few days to register. After that, I have to wait for Stella to negotiate for the Void Beast. I'll probably stay here for a month or so before looking for a city with a teleporter, then I'll look to Savannah. Walter smiled. I see. I'm sure Stella won't make you wait long. She's quite the capable woman, he said. Though I do not think you'll be able to avoid a meeting with Malcolm. Surely he's already heard of both your business with the Crown and your meeting with me. I would not put it past him to send someone to my front door to invite you for a chat. About that. I'll stay in the guest house for tonight, since you invited me, but I don't plan on overstaying my welcome. I'll head to the Merchant District and book myself and the kid a room for the time being, Derek continued with a frown. What are the chances that Malcolm leaves things be if I reject his invite? Walter laughed out loud at the question. The chances? Next to zero. Maybe I didn't explain the man's temperament well enough before. The odds of him getting angry if you refuse his invitation are a hundred percent. The man's nothing more than a smart child. You are a new shiny toy he wants to play with. Like I said, he doesn't know that he should not offend you yet. So him taking action against you is a given. Derek frowned. Damn it. This is going to be way more trouble than it's worth. He shook his head and thought everything over. What are you thinking? Walter asked, after the silence continued for an uncomfortable amount of time. Derek sighed. I'm trying to figure out if it would be less of a hassle to not respond to the invite and offend him, or accept the invitation and offend him to his face. Walter stared, slack-jawed at Derek. Why do both options end with you offending him? Have you met me? Derek answered. After letting the question sit for a moment, Walter burst out laughing. I understand. There is ne there is indeed no way for you to go an entire meeting without offending someone like him, and there's no way you will bow your head and act submissive to him, Walter sighed. I can't tell you what to do. You may be able to delay your meeting by making some excuses, then quietly leave once all your business is finished. Other than that, I don't know, and I would prefer not to have to deal with the commotion caused by a city lord's death. Walter spoke the last part in a much lower voice. Derek chuckled. I guess it wouldn't hurt to try, and I will try my best not to force your precious city lord into early retirement, he said. By the way, which inn would be good to stay in in the Middle District? You might as well stay at the Ophelian Inn here in the Noble District. I can sponsor you if you need, but I'm sure your dealings with the Crown Restaurant have already made waves. If you're able to dine there, there's no way any inn in the city would deny you entrance. Though it'll make it easier for Malcolm to keep an eye on you, Walter responded. I guess that makes things easy, Derek. Checked his storage bracelet and frowned. How much does it cost per night? Walter chuckled and tossed a small pouch on the table near Derek. This is the gold you left in Wallace's storage ring. You might as well take it. It'll cost 5 to 15 gold per night, depending on the length of the stay, which room, and the number of people. Derek hesitated, but eventually he grabbed the bag and put it in his bracelet. I guess it was my kill. No use in letting the loot go to waste. Thanks. I'll pay you back. Don't worry about it. Like I said before, letting Wallace have a noble death is already more than enough. I still feel like I'm in your debt because of my son's actions. Derek felt a little odd. It was like he was being paid by Wallace's father for the assassination of the idiot. Finally, he shrugged the feeling off. Derek looked around the table. During their conversation, both men had eaten their fill. The entire table was full of nothing but empty dishes. Derek stood. Well, it was very nice meeting you. He moved closer to Walter, who stood and held out his hand. Walter shook his hand. The honor was mine. Bronson was not jesting when he said you were a very interesting person. Derek laughed as their hands separated. He is quite the servant. He seems like a great man. 
One of the best. He's one of the few I absolutely trust. Suddenly, Derek remembered something. By the way, I was talking to the man about his sword. You said a blacksmith you know created it. It's a pretty decent sword, and I'm in the need for a new weapon. I'm kind of getting sick of using my hands. Derek pulled out his glaive, showing the chip in it. At this point, any enemy tough enough for me to face with it will destroy my glaive before it does any damage. The glaive disappeared back into his bracelet. A glaive? I haven't seen one of those in ages, Walter said. Then he sighed. I do know a good blacksmith, but Bronson's sword was a favor from me. We're not really friends, only acquaintances. With your rapid leveling, I cannot suggest him to you anyway. If I were you, I would look to the capital or Savannah for someone who could craft a weapon worthy of someone over level 200. Derek let out a breath. That's what I was expecting. Figured it wouldn't hurt to ask, though, Derek said. After our dinner, I have a much better idea of what I plan to do. Thank you. Walter nodded. It was fun. If you ever need anything or a place to stay, don't hesitate to find me. Don't worry, I'm not overly prideful or shy. If I need something, I'll be sure to ask, Derek smiled. Thanks for dinner. I'm going to head back to the guest house and get some rest. I think I might actually sleep tonight. Derek turned to walk back out from where he came from, and Walter followed. When they entered the main room of the manor, they saw Thomas and Bronson sitting across from each other, Thomas on the couch and Bronson in a chair. Bronson immediately stood and bowed. Sir? Walter nodded. It seems our dinner went on a bit longer than expected. Sylvie was laying beside Thomas on her back with her feet up. Such a great day. Best day ever, she sent to Derek when she notified him. Don't get too used to it, he transmitted back. How she was able to eat so much at the restaurant, then come here and eat again, Derek did not know. If he didn't know any better, he'd assume the void part of, their, of her race's name was talking about her stomach. It seemed endless. Derek looked at Thomas. You ready? I'm going to head back to the guest residence and get some rest. Got a lot of shit to do tomorrow. Thomas agreed and stood. Then he looked at the bunny inside. He reached down and picked her up. I'm ready. Derek, Walter, and Bronson chuckled. Derek walked to the front door and then turned around. Thanks for having me. I'll stop by tomorrow before we leave. Derek then opened the door and walked out. Thomas, trailing behind him, clumsily turned and bowed respectfully, catching a rabbit horn in the sternum in the process. Ouch! Sorry. Thank you for the meal. He quickly turned and ran out the door. The laughter resounding behind him faded as the door swung closed. And that's the end of Chapter 9. I'll see you guys in the next one. Until then, have fun, guys.